Chapter 1 The Call to Arms The call to arms echoed through the streets, rousing the citizens from their homes and businesses. It was a call that had been feared for months, ever since the first rumors of war had begun to spread. But now, it was a reality. The enemy was at the gates, and the people were being called to defend their homes and their way of life. As the men and women of the city gathered in the town square, they were met by the leaders of their community. The mayor, the town council, and the local militia leaders all stood before them, ready to give them their orders. My friends, today is a day that will go down in history, the mayor began. Today, we are called to defend our homes and our families from an enemy that seeks to destroy everything we hold dear. But we will not be defeated. We will not be conquered. We will fight with everything we have, and we will emerge victorious. The crowd erupted into cheers and applause, but the mayor quieted them with a wave of his hand. But we must not be reckless, he continued. We must be strategic and we must be smart. We must not waste our resources or our lives. We must be willing to make sacrifices, but we must also be willing to accept victory when it comes. The town council stepped forward, each member taking a turn to speak. They outlined the plan of defense, assigning roles and responsibilities to the various groups and individuals in the crowd. The militia leaders then stepped forward, giving instructions on weapons and training. As the meeting came to a close, the people dispersed, each heading to their designated station. Some went to the city walls to prepare for battle, while others headed to the armory to gather weapons. Still others went to their homes to say goodbye to their loved ones, knowing that they may not return. The call to arms had been sounded, and the people of the city were ready to defend their homes and their way of life. They knew that the road ahead would be long and difficult, but they also knew that they were in this together, and that they would emerge victorious in the end. As the sun set on the city, the people took their positions, waiting for the enemy to arrive. They were ready for the battle to begin. Chapter 2 The First Strike The first strike came without warning. The city had been on high alert, with guards posted at every gate and wall, but the enemy had found a way through the defenses. The sound of horns and drums filled the air, signaling the start of the attack. The citizens of the city were caught off guard, but they quickly rallied. The militia and guards, who had been trained for this moment, sprang into action. They manned the walls, firing arrows and launching stones at the enemy. The citizens, who had been given makeshift weapons, fought alongside them. The enemy had come in large numbers, and the city was quickly overwhelmed. The gates were breached, and the enemy poured through, overwhelming the defenders. The city was in chaos, as citizens and guards alike fought for their lives. The city's leaders had not anticipated such a fierce attack, and they struggled to keep control. They had planned for a siege, not a full-scale assault, and they were not prepared for the level of destruction that was taking place. As the battle raged on, the citizens fought with all their might. They were determined to defend their homes and their way of life, but the enemy seemed to be everywhere. They were ruthless, and they showed no mercy. The first wave of the attack lasted for hours, and when it was over, the city was in ruins. The streets were filled with the wounded and the dying, and the once beautiful buildings were now nothing but rubble. But the citizens of the city did not give up. They regrouped and began to rebuild their defenses. They knew that the enemy would be back, and they were determined to be ready for them. The first strike had been devastating, but it had also been a wake-up call. The citizens of the city realized that they were in a fight for their lives, and they were ready to do whatever it took to survive. The first strike had been a victory for the enemy, but it had also been a turning point for the citizens of the city. They were more determined than ever to defend their homes and their way of life and they were ready for the next battle. Chapter 3 The Siege Begins The siege began shortly after the first strike. The enemy had retreated, but they had not given up. They had encircled the city, cutting off all supply routes and communication. The citizens of the city were now trapped, with no way out and no way to receive help from the outside. 
The city leaders had anticipated a siege, but they had not expected it to be so intense. They had stockpiled food and water, but it quickly became clear that it would not be enough to last for a prolonged period of time. They were also running low on weapons and ammunition, and they knew that they would have to make every shot count. As the days passed, the citizens of the city grew increasingly desperate. They were running out of food and water, and they were starting to feel the effects of malnutrition and dehydration. They were also living in constant fear as the enemy launched regular attacks on the city walls. The citizens of the city were also facing internal challenges. They were not used to living in such close quarters for such a long time, and tensions were running high. They were also struggling to deal with the loss and destruction that surrounded them. Despite these challenges, the citizens of the city refused to give up. They were determined to survive and to defend their homes and their way of life. They knew that they were in this together and that they would have to rely on each other if they were going to make it through. The leaders of the city also stepped up. They organized rationing, set up medical stations, and made sure that everyone had a role to play in the defense of the city. They also worked on finding a way to break the siege whether it was by finding a weak point in the enemy's defenses or by seeking help from outside the city. The siege was a test of the citizens' resilience and determination. They had to find a way to survive in the face of overwhelming odds, and they had to find a way to hold out until help arrived. The siege was a brutal, grueling experience, but it was also a time of great sacrifice and courage. As the days turned into weeks and the weeks turned into months, the citizens of the city held on. They knew that the siege would not last forever, and they were determined to be ready when the time came to take back their city. They were determined to emerge victorious in the end. Chapter 4 The Trench Warfare The trench warfare began as a strategy for both sides to protect themselves from enemy fire while still being able to launch their own attacks. The enemy had encircled the city with trenches, cutting off all supply routes and making it difficult for the city's defenders to launch a counterattack. The city's leaders, in turn, ordered the construction of trenches to protect their own troops and to provide cover for their own attacks. The trenches were a miserable and dangerous place for the soldiers. They were often crowded, damp, and infested with rats. The soldiers had to stand watch for hours on end, in constant fear of enemy fire and gas attacks. They were also plagued by disease and injury, as the conditions in the trenches were unsanitary, and the constant bombardment made it difficult to receive medical attention. Despite the harsh conditions, the soldiers fought bravely. They knew that the trenches were their only hope for survival, and they were determined to hold the line. They launched regular attacks on the enemy trenches, trying to break through their defenses. They also defended their own trenches, repelling enemy attacks and keeping the enemy at bay. The trench warfare was a grueling and bloody battle, with both sides suffering heavy casualties. The city's defenders were running low on supplies and ammunition, and they were struggling to hold on. The enemy, on the other hand, had the advantage of numbers and resources, and they were able to launch regular attacks on the city's defenses. As the battle raged on, the city's leaders knew that they had to find a way to break the trench warfare. They ordered the construction of underground tunnels to sneak behind enemy lines and launch surprise attacks. They also sent out scouts to try and find a weak point in the enemy's defenses, but the enemy was always one step ahead. The trench warfare was a test of willpower and endurance for both sides. The city's defenders were determined to hold on, but the enemy was determined to break through. The battle raged on for months with no clear winner in sight. Both sides knew that the trench warfare would only end when one side broke, and they were determined to be the ones standing at the end. Chapter 5 No Man's Land No Man's Land was the stretch of land between the opposing trenches, where neither side had clear control. It was a barren, desolate place, scarred by the constant bombardment and littered with the bodies of fallen soldiers. It was a place of death and despair, where the only hope for survival was to avoid being seen. For the soldiers, no man's land was a constant source of fear and anxiety. 
they knew that at any moment they could be spotted by the enemy and come under fire. They also knew that if they were injured in no man's land, there was little chance of survival, as the constant bombardment made it too dangerous to go out and retrieve the wounded. Despite the danger, the soldiers were ordered to venture into no man's land on reconnaissance missions and to retrieve the bodies of fallen comrades. These missions were extremely dangerous, as the enemy was always on the lookout for intruders, and the soldiers had to move quickly and quietly to avoid detection. They were also ordered to lay barbed wire and set up booby traps in no man's land to slow down the enemy's advance. As the battle raged on, no man's land became a place of desperation and hopelessness. The soldiers knew that they were trapped in a never-ending cycle of death and destruction, with no end in sight. They were also haunted by the memory of the fallen and the constant fear of death and injury. Despite the despair, the soldiers kept fighting. They knew that no man's land was the key to breaking the siege, and they were determined to push through to the other side. They launched daring raids on the enemy trenches, trying to break through their defenses. They also worked tirelessly to fortify their own defenses, in the hopes of repelling any enemy attacks. The battle for no man's land was a test of courage and sacrifice for the soldiers. They had to face the constant threat of death and injury, and they had to find a way to push through the despair and hopelessness. They were determined to emerge victorious and to take back the land that had been taken from them. Chapter 6 The Turning Point The battle had been raging for months, with both sides suffering heavy casualties and making little progress. The city's defenders were running low on supplies and morale, while the enemy seemed to be gaining the upper hand. It seemed as though the siege would never end, and that the city would fall to the enemy. However, the turning point came unexpectedly. The city's leaders had received intelligence that a large enemy reinforcement was on its way, and they knew that they had to act fast. They ordered a surprise attack on the enemy trenches, hoping to catch them off guard and break through their defenses. The attack was a success. The enemy was caught off guard, and the city's defenders were able to break through their defenses. They also managed to capture a key enemy stronghold, which gave them control over the enemy's supply lines. This was a crucial victory, as it cut off the enemy's access to supplies and ammunition, and put them at a disadvantage. With the enemy on the back foot, the city's defenders were able to launch a counterattack. They pushed forward, taking back the ground that they had lost. They also launched a daring raid on the enemy's rear, cutting off their escape route. The enemy was now surrounded, and they knew that they had lost the battle. The turning point had come, and the city's defenders had emerged victorious. The siege was lifted, and the city was free once again. The enemy was forced to retreat, and the city's defenders were able to celebrate their hard-won victory. The turning point was a moment of triumph for the city's defenders, but it was also a moment of sadness. They had lost many friends and comrades in the battle, and they knew that the victory had come at a great cost. Nevertheless, they were proud of what they had accomplished, and they knew that they had defended their city to the very end. Chapter 7 The Battle for the Hill The hill was a strategic high ground that overlooked the battlefield. Whoever controlled it would have a clear advantage over the enemy, as they would be able to see their movements and plan their attacks accordingly. The hill was also a key supply line, and whoever controlled it would have access to the resources they needed to fight. For the soldiers, the hill was a symbol of hope. They knew that if they could take it, they would be able to turn the tide of the battle. However, the hill was heavily fortified, and the enemy had put up a strong defense. The soldiers knew that taking it would not be easy. The battle for the hill began early in the morning, with the soldiers advancing under cover of darkness. They knew that they had to move quickly, as the enemy would be expecting them. They also knew that they had to be silent, as any noise would alert the enemy to their presence. As they approached the hill, the soldiers came under heavy fire. The enemy had set up machine gun nests and artillery positions, and they were raining down bullets and shells on the advancing soldiers. 
The soldiers had to navigate through a maze of barbed wire and mines, while dodging bullets and shells. Despite the danger, the soldiers kept pushing forward. They had been trained for this moment, and they knew that they had to take the hill. They also knew that their comrades were counting on them, and that they had to succeed. As they reached the summit, the soldiers encountered heavy resistance. The enemy had set up bunkers and trenches, and they were putting up a fierce fight. The soldiers had to fight hand to hand, using bayonets and grenades. The battle was fierce and brutal, and both sides suffered heavy casualties. Finally, the soldiers were able to take the hill. They hoisted the flag and let out a cheer, knowing that they had succeeded. They had taken the hill, and they had done it against all odds. They knew that it was a turning point in the battle and that they had put the enemy on the defensive. The battle for the hill was a test of courage and determination for the soldiers. They had faced impossible odds, and they had come out victorious. They knew that they had won the hill, but they also knew that the battle was far from over. They would have to hold on to the hill, and they would have to fight to keep it. Chapter 8 The Charge the charge was the final push that the soldiers had to make in order to defeat the enemy. It was the moment that they had been waiting for, and the moment that they had trained for. The charge was the culmination of all their efforts, and the chance for them to claim victory. As the sun began to rise, the soldiers prepared for the charge. They donned their helmets, buckled their belts and picked up their rifles. They knew that this would be the most dangerous part of the battle and that they had to be ready for anything. The signal was given, and the soldiers began to move forward. They were met with a hail of bullets and shells, but they kept moving. They knew that they had to take the enemy by surprise, and that they had to keep moving. As they advanced, the soldiers encountered a series of obstacles. They had to navigate through a maze of trenches and barbed wire, while dodging bullets and shells. They also had to deal with the enemy's machine gun nests and artillery positions. Despite the danger, the soldiers kept pushing forward. They knew that this was their chance to defeat the enemy and that they had to take it. They also knew that their comrades were counting on them and that they had to succeed. As they reached the enemy's trenches, the soldiers encountered heavy resistance. The enemy had set up bunkers and trenches and they were putting up a fierce fight. The soldiers had to fight hand to hand, using bayonets and grenades. The battle was fierce and brutal, and both sides suffered heavy casualties. Finally, the soldiers were able to break through the enemy's defenses. They reached the enemy's command post and took control of it. With the command post in their hands, the enemy was forced to retreat. The charge had been a success, and the soldiers had won the battle. The charge was a moment of triumph for the soldiers, but it was also a moment of sadness. They had lost many friends and comrades in the battle, and they knew that the victory had come at a great cost. Nevertheless, they were proud of what they had accomplished, and they knew that they had fought to the very end. Chapter 9 The Fall of the Fortress The fall of the fortress was the final battle of the war. It was the moment that the soldiers had been waiting for, and the moment that they had trained for. The fortress was the last stronghold of the enemy, and the soldiers knew that they had to take it in order to win the war. As the sun began to rise, the soldiers prepared for the final assault. They donned their armor, picked up their weapons, and moved forward. They knew that this would be the most dangerous part of the battle, and that they had to be ready for anything. The fortress was a formidable structure, built on a high hill, and surrounded by walls, towers, and moats. The enemy had fortified it with cannons, mortars, and machine guns, and they had placed mines and traps all around it. The soldiers had to navigate through a maze of trenches and barbed wire while dodging bullets and shells. They also had to deal with the enemy's machine gun nests and artillery positions. They encountered heavy resistance, and many soldiers were killed. Despite the danger, the soldiers kept pushing forward. They knew that this was their chance to defeat the enemy, and that they had to take it. They also knew that their comrades were counting on them, and that they had to succeed. As they reached the walls of the fortress, the soldiers encountered the toughest resistance yet. 
The enemy had set up bunkers and trenches, and they were putting up a fierce fight. The soldiers had to fight hand to hand, using bayonets and grenades. The battle was fierce and brutal, and both sides suffered heavy casualties. Finally, the soldiers were able to break through the enemy's defenses. They reached the gates of the fortress and forced them open. They entered the fortress and fought their way to the top of the hill. They reached the enemy's command post and took control of it. With the command post in their hands, the enemy was forced to retreat. The fall of the fortress was a success, and the soldiers had won the war. The fall of the fortress was a moment of triumph for the soldiers, but it was also a moment of sadness. They had lost many friends and comrades in the battle, and they knew that the victory had come at a great cost. Nevertheless, they were proud of what they had accomplished, and they knew that they had fought to the very end. Chapter 10 The Cost of Victory The battle for the fortress had been won, but the war was not over yet. The soldiers had accomplished their mission, but they had also paid a heavy price. The cost of victory was high, and the soldiers were left to grapple with the aftermath. The first thing that the soldiers had to deal with was the loss of their comrades. The battle had been brutal, and many soldiers had been killed or wounded. The soldiers had fought alongside these men, and they had grown to know and care for them. Their loss was a blow to the soldiers, and they struggled to come to terms with it. The soldiers also had to deal with the physical and emotional trauma that they had experienced. The battle had been grueling, and the soldiers had been through a lot. They had witnessed death and destruction, and they had suffered through fear and pain. They had to come to terms with the memories and the nightmares that would haunt them for the rest of their lives. The soldiers also had to deal with the guilt that they felt. They had killed the enemy, and they had seen the enemy killed. They had fought for their country and their comrades, but they had also taken lives. They had to come to terms with the fact that they had killed, and they had to live with the knowledge that they had taken part in the destruction of human life. The soldiers also had to deal with the changes that had occurred in their lives. They had left home, and they had seen things that they never could have imagined. They had changed, and they had to adjust to the new person that they had become. They had to come to terms with the fact that they could never go back to the way things were before. The soldiers had to deal with all of these things, and they did so with courage and determination. They knew that they had done what they had to do, and that they had accomplished something great. They knew that they had fought to the very end, and that they had won the war. The cost of victory was high, but the soldiers knew that it was worth it. They knew that they had accomplished something great, and that they had helped to make the world a better place. They knew that they had done their duty, and that they had honored the memory of their fallen comrades. They knew that they had paid the price of victory, and that they would always be remembered. Chapter 11 The Casualties of War The casualties of war were not just limited to those who had fallen on the battlefield. The war had taken a toll on everyone involved, and the soldiers were not the only ones who had suffered. The families of the soldiers, the civilians caught in the crossfire, and even the enemy soldiers had all paid a heavy price. The families of the soldiers had been left to wait and wonder, hoping and praying that their loved ones would return home. They had been torn apart by the war, and they had suffered along with the soldiers. They had lost sons, brothers, and husbands, and they had been left to pick up the pieces of their shattered lives. The civilians caught in the crossfire had suffered as well. They had been caught in the middle of the battle, and they had been forced to flee their homes. They had seen their villages and cities destroyed, and they had been left to live in refugee camps. They had been traumatized by the war, and they had been left to deal with the aftermath. The enemy soldiers had also suffered. They had been forced to fight, just as the soldiers on the other side had. They had been torn away from their families, and they had been sent to the front lines. They had seen death and destruction, and they had been left to deal with the physical and emotional scars of the war. The casualties of war were not limited to one side or the other. They were felt by everyone involved, and they were a reminder of the devastating consequences of war. They were a testament to the fact that wars had real consequences, 
and that they took a heavy toll on everyone involved. The soldiers had fought for their country, for their families, and for their freedom. But the casualties of war were a reminder that war was not just about victory. It was about sacrifice, and it was about the heavy price that was paid by everyone involved. The casualties of war were a reminder that war was a complex and difficult thing, and that it was not to be taken lightly. The soldiers would carry the memories of the casualties of war with them for the rest of their lives. They would remember the fallen, the wounded, and the traumatized. They would remember the cost of war, and they would always be mindful of the heavy price that was paid by all who were involved. Chapter 12 The Prisoners of War The war had not just affected the soldiers on the front lines, but also those who had been taken prisoner. The prisoners of war had been taken from the battlefield and brought to camps, where they were held until the end of the conflict. Life as a prisoner of war was not easy. The soldiers were taken away from their families, their homes, and their freedom. They were put in cramped, unsanitary conditions, and they were often subjected to harsh treatment by their captors. They were made to work long hours, and they were often given very little food or water. Despite the conditions, the prisoners of war maintained their dignity and their courage. They formed tight-knit communities, and they supported each other through their trials and tribulations. They shared their stories and their experiences, and they forged deep bonds with each other. The prisoners of war also found ways to resist their captors. They staged hunger strikes, they sabotaged their work assignments, and they even attempted to escape. Despite the risks, they refused to be broken by their captors, and they remained defiant even in the face of great adversity. The prisoners of war were not just passive victims of war, but active participants in their own liberation. They used their courage, their strength, and their determination to resist their captors and to endure their captivity. They showed that even in the face of great adversity, the human spirit could not be broken. The prisoners of war also had a profound impact on the war itself. Their resistance, their courage, and their defiance had a ripple effect, and it inspired others to fight for freedom and for justice. They became symbols of hope and resistance, and they helped to turn the tide of the war. The prisoners of war were not forgotten by their families and their friends. They received letters and parcels, and they were given hope and encouragement by their loved ones. They were a source of inspiration and strength, and they inspired others to fight for freedom and for justice. The prisoners of war were an integral part of the war, and they were a reminder of the toll that war took on everyone involved. They were a testament to the resilience and determination of the human spirit, and they served as a powerful reminder of the cost of war. They would never be forgotten, and their sacrifice would always be remembered. Chapter 13 The Heroes Emerge The battlefield was not just a place of destruction and chaos, but it was also a place where heroes emerged. Despite the dangers, the soldiers demonstrated courage, bravery, and selflessness in the face of great adversity. They put themselves in harm's way to protect others, and they risked their own lives to save the lives of their comrades. One such hero was Private James Smith, who was part of a unit that was ambushed by enemy forces. Despite being outnumbered, Private Smith held his ground and defended his unit until reinforcements arrived. He fought with all his might, and he managed to repel the enemy, saving the lives of his comrades. Another hero was Corporal Emma Rodriguez, who served as a medic on the front lines. She put herself in harm's way to treat the wounded, and she risked her own life to save the lives of others. Despite the dangers, she remained calm and collected, and she helped to save countless lives. Captain Henry Lee was also a hero, who led his unit into battle with bravery and determination. He inspired his troops with his courage, and he rallied them in the face of great adversity. Despite being heavily outnumbered, Captain Lee led his unit to victory, and he became a legend among his troops. These heroes were not just ordinary soldiers, but they were examples of the best that humanity had to offer. They demonstrated the qualities of courage, bravery, and selflessness, and they inspired others to be their best selves. They became symbols of hope and inspiration, 
and they served as a reminder of the bravery and sacrifice that was required to win the war. The heroes of the battlefield were also recognized for their bravery. They were awarded medals of honor, and their deeds were celebrated by the public. They became legends, and their stories were passed down from generation to generation. The heroes of the battlefield also had a profound impact on the war. Their courage and bravery inspired others to fight harder, and they served as a rallying point for the troops. They showed that even in the face of great adversity, the human spirit could not be broken, and they served as a powerful reminder of what was at stake. The heroes of the battlefield would always be remembered, and their sacrifice would always be honored. They were a testament to the courage and bravery of the human spirit, and they served as a powerful reminder of the cost of war. They were heroes, and they would always be remembered as such. Chapter 14 The Battle for the Beachhead The battle for the beachhead was a crucial moment in the war, as it would determine the outcome of the conflict. The beachhead was a strategic location, and whoever controlled it would have the advantage in the war. The soldiers on both sides knew the importance of the beachhead, and they prepared for a brutal battle. The battle for the beachhead began with a massive amphibious landing, as thousands of soldiers from both sides converged on the beach. The soldiers engaged in hand-to-hand -hand combat, fighting for every inch of ground. The beach was quickly turned into a battlefield, with explosions and gunfire ringing out across the sand. The battle was fierce, and both sides suffered heavy casualties. The soldiers fought bravely, but the conditions were unfavorable, and the battle was fought in knee-deep water making it difficult to maneuver. The enemy forces were also well entrenched, and they put up a strong resistance, making it difficult for the attackers to gain ground. Despite the odds, the soldiers on the side of the attackers refused to give up. They fought with determination and courage, and they slowly pushed the enemy back. The soldiers worked together, covering each other's flanks and supporting each other in the face of danger. Finally, after hours of intense fighting, the attackers managed to secure the beachhead. They had fought their way through the enemy's defenses and established a foothold on the beach. The battle had been won, but the cost was high. The beach was littered with the bodies of fallen soldiers, and the wounded were being tended to by medics. The battle for the beachhead was a turning point in the war. It had been a brutal and costly battle, but it had given the attackers a critical advantage. They now had a foothold on the beach, and they could use it to launch further offensives. The battle for the beachhead had been won, but the war was far from over. The soldiers who fought in the battle for the beachhead would never forget their experiences. They had fought in a brutal and dangerous battle, and they had emerged victorious. They had demonstrated their courage and bravery, and they had become heroes in the eyes of their comrades. They had won the battle, but they would always remember the cost of victory. Chapter 15 The Battle in the Air The battle in the air was one of the most important and decisive battles of the war. The skies were filled with aircraft as both sides fought for control of the skies. The battle in the air was intense and dangerous, and it was fought with incredible skill and bravery. The air battle was fought on two fronts, in the air and on the ground. On the ground, the soldiers were tasked with maintaining and repairing the aircraft, as well as providing protection for the airfields. The soldiers on the ground were vital to the success of the air battle, and they worked tirelessly to support their comrades in the air. In the air, the pilots engaged in intense dogfights as they jockeyed for position and tried to outmaneuver their opponents. The pilots flew with incredible skill and bravery, and they risked their lives every time they took to the skies. They were the tip of the spear, and they were the ones who carried the fight to the enemy. The battle in the air was won through a combination of superior technology and superior tactics. The side that had the better aircraft and the better trained pilots was able to gain the upper hand, and they were able to gain control of the skies. The battle in the air was won but it was won at a high cost. Many pilots were lost, and many aircraft were damaged or destroyed. The battle in the air had a profound impact on the outcome of the war. 
It gave the side that had control of the skies a significant advantage, as they were able to use their aircraft to provide close air support to their ground troops, and they were able to disrupt enemy operations by bombing their supply lines and their military installations. The battle in the air was a testament to the bravery and skill of the pilots and the soldiers who supported them. They had fought in a brutal and dangerous battle, and they had emerged victorious. They had demonstrated their courage and bravery, and they had become heroes in the eyes of their comrades. They had won the battle, but they would always remember the cost of victory. Chapter 16 The Battle at Sea The Battle at Sea was one of the largest and most complex naval engagements of the war. The battle was fought over a vast expanse of ocean, and it involved many different types of ships, including battleships, cruisers, destroyers, and submarines. The battle at sea was a critical part of the war effort, and it had a major impact on the outcome of the war. The battle at sea began with a series of skirmishes and encounters between small groups of ships. These early engagements were fought to establish control of key sea lanes and to gather intelligence about the enemy's naval forces. As the battle progressed, it grew in size and scope, until it became a massive full-scale engagement involving hundreds of ships. The battle at sea was fought with great skill and bravery. The sailors on the ships were brave and determined, and they fought with everything they had. The ships were equipped with powerful guns, torpedoes, and mines, and they were used to attack enemy ships and disrupt their supply lines. The sailors were also prepared to defend their ships against enemy attacks, and they used their ships' guns and torpedoes to sink enemy ships. The battle at sea was won through a combination of superior technology and superior tactics. The side that had the better ships and the better trained sailors was able to gain the upper hand, and they were able to control the seas. The battle at sea was won, but it was won at a high cost. Many ships were lost, and many sailors were killed or captured. The battle at sea had a profound impact on the outcome of the war. It allowed the side that controlled the seas to project their naval power and to disrupt enemy operations. The battle at sea was a critical part of the overall war effort, and it allowed the side that controlled the seas to protect their own interests and to secure their own supply lines. The battle at sea was a testament to the bravery and skill of the sailors who fought in it. They had fought in a brutal and dangerous battle, and they had emerged victorious. They had demonstrated their courage and bravery, and they had become heroes in the eyes of their comrades. They had won the battle, but they would always remember the cost of victory. Chapter 17 The Battle for Control The battle for control was one of the defining moments of the war, and it would shape the course of the conflict for years to come. This battle was fought in the skies and on the ground, and it was a complex and deadly struggle for dominance between the two opposing forces. The battle for control began with a series of air assaults on key enemy positions, including air bases and military installations. The goal of these attacks was to weaken the enemy's air defenses and to gain control of the skies. The first wave of assaults was carried out by elite squadrons of fighter planes, and they were followed by bombing raids carried out by heavy bombers. The enemy responded to these attacks with a determined defense, and they put up a fierce resistance. They deployed anti-aircraft batteries and fighter planes to protect their positions, and they launched counterattacks against the attacking forces. The battle for control of the skies was a brutal and bloody affair, and it saw many pilots and planes lost on both sides. As the battle raged on, the ground forces began to become involved. The side that controlled the skies was able to provide air support to their ground troops, and they were able to launch precision airstrikes against enemy positions. The enemy, meanwhile, was forced to fight a desperate battle for survival, as they tried to hold their ground against the relentless attacks from the air and from the ground. The battle for control was won through a combination of superior technology and superior tactics. The side that had the better planes and the better trained pilots was able to gain the upper hand, and they were able to control the skies. The ground forces, meanwhile, were able to take advantage of the air support and to make significant gains against the enemy. 
The battle for control had a profound impact on the outcome of the war. It allowed the side that controlled the skies to project their military power and to disrupt enemy operations. The enemy was forced to fight a defensive battle, and they were unable to launch any major counterattacks. The battle for control was a critical part of the overall war effort, and it allowed the side that controlled the skies to secure their own positions and to prepare for future operations. The battle for control was a testament to the bravery and skill of the pilots and ground troops who fought in it. They had fought in a brutal and dangerous battle, and they had emerged victorious. They had demonstrated their courage and bravery, and they had become heroes in the eyes of their comrades. They had won the battle, but they would always remember the cost of victory. The aftermath of the battle for control was marked by a period of relative calm, as both sides regrouped and assessed their losses. The side that had won the battle was now in a position of strength, and they used this advantage to launch a series of offensives that would ultimately lead to victory in the war. The battle for control would forever be remembered as a turning point in the conflict, and as a testament to the bravery and skill of the men and women who fought in it. Chapter 18, The Battle for Survival The battle for survival was a desperate struggle for survival in the midst of the war. It was a battle fought by soldiers and civilians alike, as they fought to survive in the midst of the chaos and destruction of war. The battle for survival was a test of courage, endurance, and resourcefulness, and it was a battle that would define the fate of many individuals and communities. The battle for survival began in the early stages of the war, as the enemy forces swept across the countryside and began to occupy territory. The civilian population was caught in the crossfire, and they were forced to flee from their homes and their communities in search of safety. Many of them sought refuge in refugee camps, where they struggled to survive in the face of limited resources and harsh conditions. The enemy forces were relentless in their pursuit of the civilian population, and they launched a series of brutal raids and assaults against the refugee camps. They sought to eliminate any resistance and to control the population, and they used brutal tactics to achieve their goals. The civilians in the camps were caught in the crossfire, and they struggled to survive in the face of the enemy's violence and aggression. The battle for survival was also fought by the soldiers who were on the front lines. They were caught in the midst of the fighting, and they were forced to face the enemy's brutal tactics and relentless assaults. The soldiers were under constant attack, and they had to fight to survive against the enemy's superior forces. They were often outnumbered and outgunned, but they refused to give up, and they fought with bravery and determination. Despite the odds, the soldiers and civilians in the battle for survival refused to give up. They banded together and formed communities of support, and they worked together to survive against the enemy's assaults. They used their ingenuity and resourcefulness to overcome the challenges of the war, and they found ways to help one another and to support each other. The battle for survival was won through the courage and determination of those who fought in it. The soldiers on the front lines were able to hold off the enemy's assaults and to protect their comrades, and the civilians in the refugee camps were able to survive despite the harsh conditions. They had demonstrated their bravery and their resourcefulness, and they had become an inspiration to others. The aftermath of the battle for survival was marked by a period of rebuilding and recovery. The soldiers and civilians who had fought in the battle had emerged from the conflict stronger and more resilient, and they worked to rebuild their communities and to restore their lives. The battle for survival would forever be remembered as a testament to the strength and resilience of the human spirit, and as a reminder of the courage and determination that can be found in even the darkest of times. The battle for survival was a defining moment in the war and it had a profound impact on those who fought in it. It was a test of their courage, their endurance, and their resourcefulness, and it was a battle that would shape the course of the conflict for years to come. The battle for survival was a battle that would never be forgotten, and it was a battle that would always be remembered as a symbol of hope in the face of adversity. Chapter 19, The Battle for Honor 
The battle for honor was a seminal moment in the war, a battle that tested the courage, resolve, and integrity of the soldiers who fought in it. It was a battle that would determine the outcome of the war and the future of the nation, and it was a battle that would be remembered for generations to come. The battle for honor began as a seemingly routine skirmish, but it quickly escalated into a full-scale engagement between the two sides. The enemy forces were determined to capture a strategic position, and they launched a brutal assault against the soldiers who were defending it. The soldiers fought valiantly, but they were overwhelmed by the enemy's superior numbers and firepower. As the battle raged on, the soldiers on both sides were faced with a series of ethical and moral dilemmas. They were forced to question their own values and beliefs, and they were challenged to determine what was truly right and just in the face of the enemy's aggression. The battle for honor became a test of the soldiers' honor and integrity as they struggled to uphold their principles and their sense of duty in the face of the enemy's tactics. For the soldiers on the side of the nation, the battle for honor was a defining moment. They were called upon to demonstrate their courage and their commitment to the cause, and they rose to the occasion. They fought with bravery and determination, and they refused to back down in the face of the enemy's assaults. They stood their ground, even as the enemy forces threatened to overwhelm them. For the enemy soldiers, the battle for honor was a chance to prove their own bravery and determination. They fought with a fierce sense of purpose, determined to capture the strategic position and to demonstrate their own prowess in battle. They were relentless in their pursuit of victory, and they sought to prove their superiority on the battlefield. Despite the odds, the soldiers on both sides continued to fight, determined to win the battle for honor. The fighting was intense and brutal, and the casualties on both sides were heavy. The soldiers fought on, even as their comrades fell around them, and they refused to give up until the outcome of the battle was determined. In the end, the battle for honor was won by the soldiers who had upheld their principles and their sense of duty. They had demonstrated their courage and their commitment to the cause, and they had proven their honor and integrity on the battlefield. The enemy forces were forced to retreat, and the nation's forces emerged victorious. The aftermath of the battle for honor was marked by a sense of pride and triumph. The soldiers who had fought in the battle were hailed as heroes, and they were honored for their bravery and their sacrifice. The battle for honor had proven that honor and integrity were still alive and well in the midst of the war, and it had given the nation's forces a sense of purpose and direction. The battle for honor was a turning point in the war, and it had a profound impact on those who fought in it. It was a battle that would be remembered for generations to come, and it was a battle that would forever be remembered as a symbol of the courage and determination of the human spirit. The battle for honor was a testament to the power of honor, integrity, and duty, and it was a battle that would always be remembered as a shining example of the strength of the human soul. Chapter 20, The Battle for Glory As the sun began to rise over the battlefield, the soldiers of both sides stirred from their makeshift shelters. They had been fighting for days, sometimes in hand-to-hand -hand combat, sometimes from behind the protection of walls and trenches. Now the final battle was upon them. The battle for glory had become the focus of both sides. The defending army, made up of soldiers from a proud and ancient kingdom, was determined to defend their lands and their honor. The attacking force, composed of soldiers from a young and ambitious nation, was determined to prove their strength and prowess on the battlefield. As the two sides prepared for the final showdown, the air was filled with the sounds of war. The clashing of swords and shields, the thunder of horses' hooves, and the roar of battle cries echoed across the fields. The soldiers on both sides knew that this was the moment they had been fighting for, the moment that would determine who would be remembered as the victors, who would earn the right to claim the glory. The first line of the attacking force charged forward, led by the bravest of their knights. They rode towards the walls of the fortress, their horses galloping over the torn and bloody ground. As they reached the walls, the defenders launched a barrage of arrows and bolts, taking down many of the attackers. But still the others pressed on, their horses jumping the walls and entering the fortress. 
The two sides clashed in a frenzy of steel and blood, the attackers fighting to break through the defense, the defenders fighting to hold their ground. It was a battle of strength and skill, with neither side giving an inch. For hours the battle raged on, with neither side gaining the upper hand. Finally, a small detachment of the attacking force managed to break through the defenses, entering the heart of the fortress. The defenders rallied around their king, determined to make a final stand. The two sides clashed in a brutal melee, the attackers fighting to capture the king, and the defenders fighting to protect him. In the end, it was the attackers who emerged victorious, capturing the king and taking control of the fortress. The soldiers on both sides lay wounded and dying on the ground, their bodies scattered across the battlefield. The attackers raised their swords in triumph, their battle cries ringing out in triumph as they claimed the glory for their victory. The battle for glory had ended, but at a great cost. Thousands of brave soldiers lay dead or dying, their lives taken in the pursuit of honor and glory. But for the surviving soldiers, the memory of the battle would stay with them for the rest of their lives. They had fought for their cause, they had given everything they had, and they had emerged victorious. They would be remembered as heroes, the ones who had earned the right to claim the glory. Chapter 21 The Battle for Freedom The sound of war drums echoed across the battlefield, signaling the start of the final showdown. The soldiers, who had been preparing for this moment for months, tightened their grips on their weapons and steeled themselves for the fight. They were fighting for something greater than themselves, something that they all believed in. They were fighting for freedom. The battle was a desperate one, with both sides determined to come out on top. The attackers, made up of rebels and freedom fighters, were determined to overthrow the tyrannical government that had been oppressing their people for years. The defenders, composed of the government's army, were determined to maintain their control and crush the rebellion once and for all. As the two sides clashed, the battle was brutal and bloody. The rebels fought with ferocity, driven by their desire for freedom and their hatred for the oppressors. The government's army fought with discipline, their years of training and experience giving them an advantage. But the rebels were not to be underestimated. They were fueled by their belief in the cause and their determination to see it through to the end. The battle raged on for hours, with neither side able to gain the upper hand. The rebels fought bravely, but they were outnumbered and outgunned. The government's army pushed forward, using their superior strength and tactics to slowly push the rebels back. But the rebels would not give up. They fought on, their spirits never wavering, even as their casualties mounted. As the sun began to set over the battlefield, the rebels found themselves surrounded, with no escape in sight. They huddled together, their weapons at the ready, their hearts beating fast with fear and excitement. They knew that this was their final chance, their last stand. They would fight to the death, or they would win their freedom. In a sudden surge of energy, the rebels charged forward, their weapons blazing. They fought with all their might, their courage and determination overwhelming the government's army. In a moment of confusion and surprise, the rebels managed to break through the defense and enter the heart of the government's stronghold. The battle was fierce, with both sides fighting for their lives. The rebels fought their way through the stronghold, taking control of the buildings one by one. The government's army fought back with everything they had, determined to hold on to their power. But it was too late. The rebels had won the battle for freedom. As the sun rose over the battlefield the next morning, the rebels stood victorious. They had achieved what they had set out to do, they had won their freedom. The government's army lay defeated, their bodies scattered across the battlefield. The rebels raised their weapons in triumph, their battle cries ringing out in celebration. The battle for freedom was over, but the cost had been great. Thousands of brave soldiers lay dead or dying, their lives taken in the pursuit of freedom. But for the surviving soldiers, the memory of the battle would stay with them for the rest of their lives. They had fought for their cause, they had given everything they had, and they had emerged victorious. They had won their freedom, and they would be remembered as heroes, the ones who had fought for a brighter future. Chapter 22 The Battle for the Future As the war raged on, 
the soldiers of both sides found themselves fighting not just for their own survival, but for the future of their country. The outcome of this conflict would determine whether they would live in a world of peace and prosperity, or one of oppression and tyranny. For some, the battle was a matter of personal honor and pride. For others, it was a matter of duty to their nation and the principles for which it stood. But for all of them, it was a battle for the future. On the front lines, the soldiers could feel the weight of the world upon their shoulders. They knew that every decision they made, every action they took, could have far-reaching consequences for generations to come. They fought with every ounce of strength and courage they possessed, knowing that the future of their country and their families was at stake. As the soldiers battled for control of key strategic positions, the conflict shifted from a battle for territory to a battle for the hearts and minds of the people. Propaganda campaigns were launched, painting one side as the liberators and the other as oppressors. The soldiers on both sides found themselves fighting not just for military objectives, but for the hearts and minds of their fellow citizens. Despite the intense fighting and heavy casualties, the soldiers on both sides remained determined. They were driven by a fierce devotion to their cause and a deep love for their country. Whether they were fighting for freedom or for their own survival, they believed in their cause and were willing to lay down their lives for it. As the war drew to a close, the soldiers on both sides looked back on the sacrifices they had made and the battles they had won and lost. They realized that the future was not something that could be won or lost on a single battlefield. It was something that would be shaped by the decisions and actions of generations to come. In the end, the battle for the future was not won or lost by any single soldier or group of soldiers. It was won by the collective efforts of all those who fought for freedom, justice, and the right to determine their own future. The soldiers who had fought in the trenches, flown in the skies, and sailed the seas returned home as heroes, hailed for their bravery and sacrifice. But they knew that the true victory was not in the battles they had won, but in the world they had helped to create for the generations to come. Chapter 23 The Battle for Legacy As the war came to a close, the soldiers on both sides were left to reflect on what it had all meant. The conflict had lasted for years and had cost countless lives, and now the soldiers were left to grapple with the aftermath. For some, the battle was a matter of personal honor and pride, but for others, it was a matter of leaving a legacy for future generations. For many soldiers, the war was a turning point in their lives. They had fought and suffered alongside their comrades, and they had formed bonds that would last a lifetime. As they returned home, they were hailed as heroes, and their bravery and sacrifice was celebrated by the nation. They were proud of what they had accomplished, but they also realized that the true test of their legacy would come in the years to come. For some, the war had given them a new perspective on life. They had seen firsthand the horrors of war and the devastating impact it could have on individuals and communities. They were determined to do what they could to prevent future wars and to promote peace and understanding between nations. They devoted themselves to causes like disarmament and diplomacy, hoping to leave behind a world that was more peaceful and secure for future generations. For others, the war had revealed a deeper sense of purpose. They had seen how the conflict had brought out the best and worst in people, and they were determined to use their experiences to help shape a better future. They became involved in activism, working to promote social and political change. They believed that the legacy of their war was not just the battles they had fought, but the world they could help create in the aftermath. For still others, the war was a time to reflect on their own lives. They realized that the conflict had changed them in profound ways, and they were determined to use their experiences to make a positive impact in the world. They became teachers, sharing their stories and their lessons with the next generation. They were determined to pass on their legacy of bravery and sacrifice so that future generations would understand the cost of freedom and the importance of fighting for what they believed in. As the years went by, the soldiers who had fought in the war became known as the greatest generation. They had fought in a conflict that had defined their lives, and they had left a legacy that would endure for generations to come. Their bravery and sacrifice had inspired others to take up the cause of peace and justice, 
and their legacy had helped shape the world in which we live today. In the end, the battle for legacy was not won or lost on the battlefield. It was won by the choices and actions of those who had fought in the conflict and by their determination to leave behind a world that was better and more just. The soldiers who had fought in the trenches, flown in the skies, and sailed the seas had created a legacy of bravery and sacrifice, and their memory would live on for generations to come. Chapter 24 The Battle for Peace The sun was shining brightly, casting a warm glow over the battlefield as the armies of the two nations finally clashed in the last and final battle of the war. The sound of clashing steel and the roar of the wounded filled the air as both sides fought for their own interests, for their own ideas of what peace should look like. For the soldiers on the front lines, the battle was a test of endurance, courage, and survival. They fought tooth and nail, knowing that the outcome of this battle would determine the fate of their families, their homes, and their nation. For the leaders of the two nations, the battle was a test of power, resolve, and political will. They had both staked their careers on this war, and they were determined to see it through to the end. As the battle raged on, it became clear that both sides were evenly matched. Neither side seemed to be gaining an advantage, and the casualties on both sides were mounting. The situation seemed hopeless, and both sides began to realize that this battle might very well determine the outcome of the war. It was at this point that a small group of soldiers from both sides stepped forward. They were tired of the fighting, the killing, and the endless cycle of violence that seemed to have no end. They had seen enough death and destruction, and they were determined to bring about a peaceful resolution to the conflict. Slowly but surely, these soldiers began to negotiate a ceasefire, talking to each other across the battlefield, using hand gestures and speaking in hushed tones. They put aside their weapons, and in a bold and daring move, they walked across the battlefield to meet in the center. There they formed a human chain, linking arms and joining together in a peaceful demonstration. The sight of this was a powerful symbol, and it soon spread to the other soldiers on the battlefield. Slowly but surely the fighting began to die down, and the sound of weapons clashing was replaced by the sound of laughter and conversation. The leaders of the two nations were stunned. They had never seen anything like this before, and they were at a loss for words. But they soon realized that the soldiers on the battlefield were right, and they began to work together to negotiate a peace treaty. The war was over, and a new era of peace and cooperation had begun. The soldiers who had stepped forward to bring about this peace were hailed as heroes, and their bravery and sacrifice would be remembered for generations to come. The battle for peace had been won, and it had been won by the brave soldiers who had put aside their weapons, and had decided to work together for the greater good. They had shown the world what it truly meant to fight for peace, and their legacy would live on long after the last shots of the war had been fired. Chapter 25 The Battle for Redemption The sun rose over the battlefield, casting an orange glow over the broken and scarred landscape. The sounds of war had finally come to an end, replaced by the cries of the wounded and the moans of the dying. The soldiers, who had fought so hard for so long, were now trying to come to terms with the reality of their situation. For some, the battle for redemption had been won. They had fought with bravery and honor, and had emerged from the conflict with their dignity and reputation intact. They had given their all for a cause they believed in, and had come away from the experience with a newfound sense of purpose. For others, however, the battle for redemption was just beginning. They had been part of the losing side, and had been forced to surrender to the enemy. They had been taken prisoner, and were now faced with the prospect of years of captivity. For these soldiers, the battle for redemption would be a long and arduous journey. They would have to endure the hardship of captivity, and would have to find the strength to keep their spirits up in the face of adversity. They would have to find the courage to forgive their captors, and would have to find the compassion to understand that the enemy was just as human as they were. Despite the difficulties they would face, many of these soldiers remained determined to redeem themselves. They were driven by a sense of duty and a love of their country, and were determined to do all that they could to make a positive difference in the world. As the days went by, 
the soldiers slowly began to heal. They formed bonds of friendship and camaraderie and worked together to rebuild their shattered lives. They learned new skills and put their experiences to good use in helping others. They found meaning and purpose in their new roles and in the process began to rediscover the hope and happiness that had been taken from them by the war. Years passed and eventually the soldiers were released from captivity. They returned home to their families and friends who welcomed them back with open arms. The soldiers had been tested and had come out stronger for it. They had fought the battle for redemption and had emerged from the experience as true heroes. For these soldiers, the battle for redemption was a victory, not just for themselves but for all of humanity. They had shown the world that it was possible to rise above the hatred and violence of war and to find a path towards peace and understanding. They had left a legacy that would inspire generations to come and had helped to lay the foundation for a more just and equitable world. Chapter 26, The Battle for Legacy The battle for legacy was one of the most critical moments in the battlefield of honor. The soldiers fighting on both sides knew that their actions would determine the legacy that would be left behind for future generations. They would be remembered not just for their bravery, but for the impact that their victory or defeat would have on the world. For many, the battle for legacy was not just about winning or losing, it was about preserving the honor and dignity of their nation. The soldiers felt a deep sense of pride in their heritage and the ideals that their country stood for, and they were determined to protect those values at all costs. On one side, the soldiers fighting for freedom and democracy were determined to show the world that their cause was just and their resolve unbreakable. They knew that if they lost the battle for legacy, their country would be forever remembered as a failed experiment, a footnote in history. On the other side, the soldiers fighting for tyranny and oppression were equally determined to prove to the world that their way was the only way. They were motivated by a deep-seated hatred for their enemies, and they saw the battle for legacy as an opportunity to show their strength and dominance. As the battle raged on, the two sides clashed in a brutal, merciless struggle. The fighting was fierce, and neither side was willing to give up an inch of ground. The soldiers on both sides displayed tremendous bravery and tenacity as they fought for their cause, but as the days passed, it became clear that the outcome of the battle for legacy would have far-reaching consequences. In the end, the soldiers fighting for freedom and democracy emerged victorious, and the legacy of their victory was felt around the world. People everywhere saw the battle for legacy as a triumph of the human spirit, a testament to the enduring power of the ideals of freedom and justice. The soldiers who fought in the battle for legacy went on to become heroes, their names forever etched into the annals of history. They will be remembered as the men and women who fought for their beliefs, who gave their all in defense of their country and their values. Their legacy will endure, serving as a reminder to future generations of the sacrifices that were made, and the ideals that were upheld in the battle for legacy. For those who fought in the battlefield of honor, their legacy will be a source of pride, a testament to their bravery, and a symbol of their commitment to a better future for all. Chapter 27, The Battle for Honor. The battle for honor was one of the most significant events of the war. It was a test of bravery and sacrifice as the soldiers fought to defend their country and their way of life. The battle was fought on two fronts, on the ground, where the soldiers faced off against the enemy in hand-to-hand -hand combat, and in the air, where the pilots risked their lives to provide air cover for their comrades on the ground. The soldiers of the army had trained for months to prepare for the battle for honor. They had been taught to fight with honor and to show no mercy to the enemy. The soldiers knew that their lives would be in danger, and that they would have to be willing to make the ultimate sacrifice for their country. The battle for honor began early in the morning as the sun rose over the battlefield. The soldiers advanced on the enemy lines, their weapons at the ready. They fought with courage and determination, their eyes fixed on the enemy. The enemy fought back with equal ferocity, determined to win the battle and gain control of the land. The soldiers and the enemy clashed in a brutal and bloody struggle. 
The ground shook with the force of their weapons and the roar of their voices. The soldiers fought with honor and bravery, never giving up despite the odds against them. The enemy was relentless, but the soldiers refused to be defeated. In the air, the pilots battled for control of the skies. They flew their planes with skill and precision, their weapons at the ready. The pilots provided crucial air support for the soldiers on the ground, raining down bombs on the enemy positions and providing cover for the soldiers as they advanced. The battle for honor was a long and grueling fight, but in the end the soldiers emerged victorious. They had defended their country and their way of life, and they had done so with honor. They had proven themselves as heroes, and their bravery and sacrifice would be remembered for generations to come. As the soldiers returned home they were greeted as heroes. They had fought for their country and for their families, and they had done so with bravery and honor. The battle for honor would forever be remembered as a turning point in the war, a testament to the bravery and determination of the soldiers who fought for their country. The battle for honor was not just a victory for the soldiers, but for the entire nation. It was a victory for freedom, for honor, and for the future of the country. The soldiers had fought for their legacy, and their legacy would live on for generations to come. They had fought for honor, and their honor would always be remembered. Chapter 28 The Battle for the Future The battle raged on, with each side determined to claim victory and secure their future. On one side were the defenders, a proud people who had stood strong against invaders for generations. On the other side were the attackers, a relentless force driven by the desire to conquer and control. For the defenders, the battle was about preserving their way of life, their culture, and their traditions. They had seen what had happened to other nations that had fallen to invaders, and they were determined to keep their own land free. They fought with all their might, driven by the belief that their cause was just, and that their sacrifice would secure a brighter future for their children and grandchildren. For the attackers, the battle was about power and prestige. They saw the defenders as weak and backward, and believed that by conquering them, they could demonstrate their strength to the world and extend their reach. They fought with cunning and ferocity, seeking to break the will of the defenders and claim their land as their own. The battle was brutal and relentless, with no quarter given on either side. The air was thick with the smoke of war, and the ground was littered with the bodies of the fallen. Men on both sides fought and died for what they believed in, and as the days passed, it became clear that this would be a decisive conflict, one that would determine the course of history for generations to come. For those who survived, the battle was a defining moment, one that would shape their lives and their outlook forever. Some emerged from the conflict as heroes, hailed for their bravery and sacrifice, while others emerged as broken men, haunted by the horrors they had witnessed and the toll that the battle had taken on them. But as the last shots were fired and the smoke cleared, it was clear that the future had been secured. The defenders had triumphed and the attackers had been driven back, but both sides had suffered heavy losses. In the aftermath of the battle, both sides would have to come to terms with the cost of victory and the legacy that they would leave for future generations. For the defenders, the battle was a reminder of the bravery and sacrifices that had been made to secure their future. It was a call to continue to stand strong and guard their traditions, even in the face of adversity. They would remember the fallen and honor their legacy, and they would look to the future with hope and determination, knowing that their sacrifices had secured a brighter future for those who would come after them. For the attackers, the battle was a humbling experience, one that would leave them with a newfound respect for the defenders and their cause. They would come to understand the cost of war, and the toll that it takes on those who fight, and they would vow to never forget the lessons that they had learned. They would look to the future with a sense of humility, knowing that their actions had shaped the world in ways that they could never have imagined, and they would work to ensure that their legacy was one of peace and understanding. And so, as the last embers of the battle faded, the future lay open, a canvas waiting to be painted with the stories of those who had fought and those who had fallen a future that would be shaped by the courage and sacrifice of those who had fought for what they believed in, and by the determination of those who would build a better world in their wake.
Chapter 29, The Battle for Legacy The battle for legacy was one of the most significant struggles in the battlefield of honor. The soldiers and leaders of both sides knew that the outcome of the war would shape the future of the world and determine their place in history. For many soldiers, fighting for legacy meant defending the honor of their country, their families, and themselves. They sought to prove their bravery, to be remembered as heroes, and to ensure that their descendants would be proud of their sacrifices. The battle for legacy was not just about the present, but about the future as well. For the leaders, the battle for legacy was a chance to secure their place in history. They knew that their decisions and actions would be scrutinized by future generations, and they sought to prove that they were wise, decisive, and capable leaders. In the early days of the war, both sides believed that victory was within their grasp. The soldiers fought with fierce determination, and the leaders made bold decisions, confident that they were on the right side of history. But as the war dragged on, it became clear that victory was not so simple. The battle raged on, with both sides taking heavy losses. The soldiers began to question the worthiness of their cause, and the leaders realized that their legacy was not as secure as they had once thought. As the conflict reached its climax, the battle for legacy became a fight for survival. The soldiers fought to protect their families and the future of their country. The leaders made difficult decisions, balancing the needs of their people against the need to secure their own place in history. In the end, both sides suffered tremendous losses, but the victors emerged with a newfound appreciation for the cost of war. They understood that the battle for legacy was not just about winning, but about preserving the values and ideals that made their country great. The legacy of the battlefield of honor was one of bravery, sacrifice, and honor. The soldiers who fought there were remembered as heroes, and the leaders who made the tough decisions were recognized as wise and capable leaders. Their legacy lived on, shaping the future of the world and inspiring future generations to fight for their own place in history. Chapter 30, The Battle for Honor The sun was just beginning to rise over the battlefield, casting a warm glow over the soldiers who were gathered at the front lines. The sound of marching feet echoed through the air as the soldiers made their way forward, their eyes fixed on the enemy's position. At the forefront of the charge was Captain James, a veteran of many battles who had been given the honor of leading his troops into battle once again. He held his head high, his sword at the ready, and his heart filled with determination. The enemy was not going to stand idly by, and as Captain James and his troops charged forward, they were met with a barrage of arrows and cannon fire. The ground shook with each explosion, and the air was filled with the sound of clashing steel and the screams of the wounded. But Captain James and his troops pressed on, their goal clear in their minds. They were fighting for the honor of their country, for the glory of their flag, and for the freedom of their people. The battle raged on for hours, each side determined to emerge victorious. As the day wore on, the tide of the battle shifted in favor of Captain James and his troops. They pushed the enemy back, taking control of the battlefield and securing their position. But the victory was not without cost. Captain James was wounded, his sword arm badly damaged, and his body covered in bruises and cuts. But even as he lay on the ground, he refused to surrender. He would not let the enemy take his honor, or that of his country. His bravery and determination inspired his troops, and they continued to fight on, pushing the enemy back until they had claimed complete victory. When the last of the enemy had retreated, Captain James was carried off the battlefield, his head held high, and his heart filled with pride. The battle for honor was won, but the cost was great. Many lives had been lost, and many more were forever changed. But the soldiers who had fought and died on that battlefield would always be remembered as heroes, their bravery and sacrifice a testament to the strength of their country and the power of their cause. As the sun set on the battlefield, the soldiers gathered to pay their respects to their fallen brothers and sisters. They knew that their legacy would live on, that their sacrifice would never be forgotten, and that their honor would endure for generations to come. About the Publisher Accepting Manuscripts in the Most Categories 
we love to help people get their words available to the world. Revival Waves of Glory Focus is to provide more options to be published. We do traditional paperbacks, hardcovers, audiobooks, and ebooks all over the world. A traditional royalty based publisher that offers self publishing options, Revival Waves provides a very author friendly and transparent publishing process with President Bill Vincent involved in the full process of your book. Send us your manuscript, and we will contact you as soon as possible. Contact Bill Vincent at rwgpublishing at yahoo.com.